Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Now I've seen this question asked on pretty much every platform I can think of. Facebook groups, Instagram, YouTube comments, even on podcasts themselves. And that is the question, well, being what the title of the video is, of course, how to get your bearded dragons to eat veggies. For some of these bearded dragons, this comes as an ease, no issues whatsoever. You just put some greens in there and they eat them right up. However, for some of you guys, some of the stubborn dragons out there, this can be quite an issue for you guys and it can pose quite a challenge on getting that dragon to eat those veggies. So I decided to make a video today going about the three big tips and tricks on how to get your bearded dragon to eat those greens and really just stop being stubborn in general because my God, is it just ever annoying? With all that being said, I guess it's time to sit back, relax, dive into some Peter Dragon content, and roll the intro. Real quick before we get this video started, I just wanted to ask you guys a quick favor. Now, if you do watch this video and you find that these tips and tricks did help you out, and hey, your bearded dragon is finally able to eat those greens and stop being stubborn, maybe you can do me a huge favor afterwards and like the video, subscribe, all of that good stuff would really help me out, really help the channel out, boost some stuff, get some other good content out there. Uh, that's about it for my little spiel. Let's get into the video. Yeah, also, real quick, I am uh, not wearing the bandage anymore. The thing's it's uh, pretty dry now for people that don't know and like are new to the channel, they're like, what are they talking about. Uh, I cut open my hand pretty bad. It's now a pretty big scar or is scarring. So that's fun. I still, I can kind of grip now. It's, it's getting a little better, but yeah, I just have like a big old thing on my hand. That's uh, good stuff. Half of you guys have no idea what I'm talking about or care, so we're just gonna dive into the video now. And diving into this video, let's get into it. The first tip is going to be start the bearded dragon out young. Now, while I understand this might not help out those of you that have adult bearded dragons and are having trouble eating the greens, and you're like, thanks, Dakota, that, yeah, just let's just go back in time and fix it. Uh, however, for the people of you here that have the baby bearded dragons and are just trying to get some tips and tricks so they heard of this stuff about bearded dragons being stubborn, when it comes to eating greens, the best thing you can do is, while that baby dragon is still young, uh, give it some greens, man. Get it accustomed to it, uh, mix some stuff, give it some variety, things like that, uh, just to make sure that while the bearded dragon is at a young age, of course, with it being needing most of the proteins and things like that, you can also supplement with some of those greeneries and veggies and fruits as well, just to make sure that the animal is getting at least some of it, getting a little bit accustomed to it before it gets to that stubborn period as it gains into an adulthood. Now, this is probably the biggest reason why my bearded dragon, personally, I have like zero issues with him really eating anything. It's due to the fact that as soon as I got him at around that juvie to sub-adult stage, I was already offering those greens, offering those fruits with the, of course, the supplemental bugs and insects at the reach that he needed. Just have to say all that so you two people don't comment. <laughs> um, I really haven't had any issues with him doing that. Of course, I'm with Renee's bearded dragon. She also had any, did not have any issues with it just because the fact that we both started him out young. But hey, I understand that this really isn't everyone's case. Probably actually most of you guys watching this video are already having the problem as an adulthood. So we'll get into the other tricks which really pampers to more of the adult bearded dragons that are having trouble. And now, of course, going to get into tip number two, something I like to call the feeder trick. The way, if you guys hear like constantly scratching in this video, it's actually the Aki monitors right next to me. They just literally 24 seven are up and down the enclosure running around and they're constantly like scratching at the walls trying to climb up on stuff. They are a racket. Uh, however, it does not make good for um, audio during this. He's now looking at me like, hey, are you talking crap? <laughs> Anyway, all right, getting into the feeder trick. Now, this is probably gonna be the simplest thing and really the most beneficial out of all three in the video. Um, really, it's pretty easy stuff. Um, pretty much whatever your bearded dragon's favorite food is, whether that be, you know, dubia roaches, uh, wax worms, super worms, meal worms, black soldier fly larva, any of those, uh, pretty much what you're gonna do is you're gonna chop up that variety of greens you're gonna be using, you know, collard, dandelions, anything like right here. I made a little diet guide a while back. Uh, pretty much you're gonna have that, serve that up to them, huh? Nothing's happening, that bearded dragon ain't eating those greens. Here's the next trick. You sprinkle the feeders on top. I know, 
whoa, what a freaking brain explosion of an idea that is. Uh, while it seems like common sense, it is really the easiest thing you can do. Uh, pretty much just take whatever worms you got, top or sprinkle them on top. They'll usually dig down a little bit, burrow down into the salad. Uh, this way the salad it actually, it starts like moving, kind of having a life of its own. Not only does this entice the dragon because it's actually a moving thing, uh, also it sees, hey, these are super worms, mealworms, whatever the case may be. I like those. I'm gonna go take a big chomp out of them. Boom, what does he chomp also? He chomps that collard greens with no choice now. The bearded dragon has to eat the collard greens. There you have it. Now you, you got your bearded dragon to eat the greens by tricking him. <laughs> Human intelligence always trumps rept reptilian intelligence. Except for our reptilian overlords, of course, so that we do not trump those. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it as far as that goes. You just sprinkle on top and you're good to go. Uh, the only thing I really recommend other words as far as this trick goes is uh, make sure not to like excessively feed these things. So like if you're using some of those little treat things, again, wax worms, super worms, anything like that. Of course, those bugs are gonna be high in fat, so you don't wanna feed those with the greens and then feeding them as well. So for instance, if you're doing like super worms or wax worms in the salad, I would recommend doing stuff like crickets, phoenix worms, or dubia roaches, or at least some sort of roach species as your protein part of the diet just to make sure that he's not getting that excess fat from doing this trick with the salad and then more of that as the protein or insect based feeder as well. Pretty much to sum it up, if you're putting it in the salad, don't put it in the bowl for next time. Uh, variety is key, blah blah blah, all that good stuff. Let's get into the next tip. Then getting into the last main tip on this list, we're going to be going over one that I find to be pretty strange if I'm being honest with myself. I don't really have a clear understanding why it works. However, it's had proven success. So we're gonna put it on the list. Of course, that's going to be number three, using bumblebee pollen in the veggies, gets them to eat it. Why? Let's find out. I mean, I, I, I can't, I don't really know what to explain about this. Uh, get, you, you purchase your bumblebee pollen and then you put it on the salad, boom. That's, that's about it. But why? Really the real question here is, why bumblebee pollen? That is so strange and trust me, when I first heard about it, it made pretty much zero sense to me. The only real clear understanding I've come to without doing the proper research on it before, this is just my like hypothesis before I did the research on it, uh, was the fact is, of course in the wild with all the little flowers and stuff, Stuff. Um, but dandelion, dan even like dandelion greens, I just got dandelions on the mind. Uh, bumblebees, of course, pollinate that stuff. They're going like flower to flower. So my only guess is they like have some sort of instinctual thing with the bumblebee pollen. And so they're like, hey, it smells like bumblebees. We eat that stuff. We eat it. Yes. Bearded dragons are Italian now. I do bad Italian accents. Yes. Actually, it went over to like the count uh, at the end of that. I should just stop doing accents. <laughs> Pretty, uh, pretty strange little method, but it is a proven method and it works. The only thing I have to say about that is the fact that I wouldn't try to use it consistently, like just like every time sprinkle the bumblebee pollen and just every single time if you're catching my drift on what I'm saying with that, try it a few times, get them accustomed to it, and then try it without a few times and then just stop doing it. It's kind of like a little trick to get them to do it, but I really don't recommend it being used like all the time as like, okay, and now just for every salad I have feed for my bearded dragon for the rest of its 20 plus years, I'm just gonna sprinkle bumblebee pollen on it. That's that's not the way to do it, just as a quick tune-up jump start of him eating the vegetables. That's about we're gonna wrap it up for today. Those are the three main tips I have. Uh, just a couple other quick ones. Of course, just try a variety of different things. Uh, there's a huge list of different vegetables and fruits you can feed your bearded dragon. Maybe he doesn't like one thing, but maybe he does like the other. Just persistence, trying it over and over again, using these tips to try to help you out a little bit on that as well. Uh, it can go a long way. Uh, like I said, I do have a diet guide. Uh, it's actually, if you guys wanna check it out, there's gonna be a playlist at the very end of this that you can click on and then just find that. I got like a bunch of bearded dragon videos I've done on the channel. So if you want to check that out to get the uh, your big list of little fruits and veggies, pretty much everything you can feed your bearded dragon, uh, it'll be right there at the end after I uh, do my little spiel. And as I say at the end of every single video, of course, huge shout out to Zen Habitats. If you're unfamiliar with Zen Habitats, they make enclosures like this one. This one right here, this marvelous, magnificent, elegant, just pretty rad enclosure. Of course, we got Toad the Bearded Dragon in there. Uh, he really has been digging it. I really dig it. I actually might switch Rex from the AP cage to a Zen Habitat, just because I honestly think they look better than just the standard PVC. Uh, if you guys are looking to get one of those bad, 
freaking enclosure that can't cuss because of YouTube. They'll demonetize me. You can check that out right down in their description where I got the link. They got a bunch of different sizes. Uh, personally, this one was the 4x2, but hey, Toke geckos, crested geckos, really any, any, any animal you can set your mind to. Zen Habitat probably has an enclosure for you. Go check it out. It's right down there at the bottom. And of course, we've got all the other good stuff. Uh, uh, uh. Jesus, I almost fell. We got all the other good stuff, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, merch. We got it all down there, including Patreon. Patreon.com slash TBCBExact, where you get the inside scoop on everything that's happening within the business. This includes first, first looks on all the animals I'm getting, which we actually just got four new animals, four new breeders. What breeders exactly? Ooh, you'll have to find out by going to Patreon itself and then becoming a member. Wow, it's uh, it's that I'm that much of a tease when it comes to information like that. If you want to check out those awesome animals, you can actually give sign sign. You can sign up for it as low as one dollar a month. It's all pretty good. It's a really fun site. We got a couple guys on there. It's an awesome little community. I got really tight niche community right now. Though I wish it was a little bit more so I could be making more money. But hey, beggars can't be choosers is all I'm saying. Hey, you want to go down there? Go right down there in the description where you also get a bunch of different perks. It starts as low as one dollar a month. Some pretty good stuff. Uh, your name also gets to be in the outro. What outro exactly? The one that we are going to be rolling right now.